What is up everyone? So is the JavaScript bootcamp on scrimba.com worth it? So in case you haven't seen my previous video, I already did the React bootcamp on scrimba.com and I really, really liked this course. Like it was awesome. So I figured I'd go into the JavaScript one just to, you know, fill in some gaps and see what it's about. And I have a completely different uh, view on this bootcamp compared to the React one. So if you want to hear what I have to say about it, then make sure you watch the video all the way to the very end. So let's go ahead and uh, just click on this just to show you that I actually watched this course to the max 100%. And here's the instructor, Reed. I do not know too much about him, so I can't really say much. The one for the React bootcamp is the head of education for a actual bootcamp that costs lots more money than this, you know, $39 course. But for this guy, I don't really know much about him. But I mean, either way, I just got the course anyways. And uh, you can already see this sort of thing. So I'm not gonna go into detail talking about like the content and whatnot. I'm gonna talk more about my experience with this compared to other courses I've taken on JavaScript. So I've taken a bunch on Udemy. I mean, you can see the list of courses. I made reviews on other um, courses too as well. And since I took the React Bootcamp on this website first, I had such high expectations because the way that course was structured was, it was so good. And this one wasn't the same experience, I would say, because they're just two different people. So pretty much I was expecting this JavaScript Bootcamp to be like a beginner to, you know, advance like that. But this was almost intermediate to advanced like right in the get-go so uh i was expecting it to be like a typical udemy course where you see uh like explaining simple things like arrays numbers true false something like super basic stuff like that and then like slowly going into things but at first the first few um uh videos like i was able to you know just get it and be like okay i got this but then all of a sudden he like flipped the switch on like one uh, lecture and it was just like from zero to 100 like that fast and i felt like maybe that's just i wasn't um i just don't know that much javascript to where i just didn't get it but then i checked the q a so the cool thing about scrimba's um i don't even know which one it was but let me just click on something random just to show you like what i'm talking about so i checked the q a and usually people will uh, comment on something. And for this specific lecture, like everyone was saying the same thing, how like it was just like a big jump and they just weren't ready for that. But I think that only happened to me like twice throughout this course. But that's not even like the part that I would say isn't the biggest thing that I wasn't like too fond of. I'll say it's more of the way he just taught it. Cause I've seen like typical courses you find online, they essentially, they give you the code like they tell you what you want to hear and then you just watch them and sit back. Hopefully follow along if you can. And if you don't follow along, then you'll find that out at the end of the course when you try to build something from scratch. But uh, another fun fact too, in case you have not seen it, is Scrimba. You're probably wondering, you know, what is Scrimba if you've never seen it? Essentially, it allows you to code while they're actually teaching. So let me mute this. And if you've seen the React course, then um, I mean, you already know this, but maybe this isn't a good video. Yeah, let me go to another video because that's like those are the intro ones where like it um like it tells you what's gonna happen. I feel like those are kind of unnecessary because it's like it's just like a minute of time spent just to tell you what you're gonna do already. Again, it doesn't matter, it doesn't do any doesn't change anything, but it's just like um not really the most necessary thing. But let's just go back to here. So Scrimba pretty much so this video is live playing right now. I just muted obviously, but um you can see he's typing, like he's typing, this is him. So if I were to go in here, I can say, hey, what's up? All right, so I can't use the quotes, but you get the point. So, hey, what? I'm gonna say, just say, hey, right? So, hey, you can see me typing. And then basically I can do that and then play the uh, video again and it re goes back to whatever spot he was in the lecture. So if like, he's like, hey, make a challenge where you create your own constant with the colors. It'd be like const, I don't know, pink color equals to whatever, whatever hashtag that is. That's like a little cool challenge like that. That's the ability of Scrimba. So that's a bonus of Scrimba, but I feel like for this course 
overall, I would say it's uh, it has some cool golden nuggets in here. There's some stuff that I'll probably remember for like my whole time to where I didn't hear any of these in other courses I've seen. But for the price tag, I would say if someone is just getting started, it, it might make you frustrated. Now let me tell you more about it. But basically, the React Bootcamp, the instructor, like almost every video, he'd put out a challenge. And it'd be like the most simple thing, but it checks you every couple vids to make sure you're even paying attention. For this uh, boot camp, I was expecting the same thing, even though obviously they're two different people. And this one wasn't that um, challenge focus. It was more of just telling you what he's doing. And then at the end of like all the videos, he'd give you a challenge. And most of the time, the challenge is either super simple or it's... I just don't remember how to do it or even they're just like there's such a big gap that there's not enough engagement or interaction especially for a platform where you literally you're allowed to type so i wish if he could improve it because again he obviously can add more updates to in the future if he added more challenges like almost a challenge every lecture that would have made it way more engaging but i felt like that was lacking the amount of interactivity with the platform designed to interact with the actual code and the challenges weren't even um, too crazy in the beginning, but that wasn't that part isn't too big of a deal. I would say the biggest parts, I'd say the biggest bonuses of this course is the project. So um, I'm sure you probably could find them online. I don't know. I haven't checked um, YouTube and searched to see if there's like a Google clone tutorial or hacker news tutorial, but um, maybe there is. Then again, you wouldn't have to worry about this course. But if there's not. I'd say these products are pretty solid because they show you this they show you real applications that are actually be or at least the way he built them that are being used like Google Keep. I never used it, but like it's essentially something Google created. And he shows us like a mini site, like a mini replica version of it. And then same with Hacker News, which is kind of like a um like a blog Reddit style kind of thing. But uh, before that, like that, before you even get to those parts, you got to go through the most of the course, which is I think it's like twelve hours long. This whole thing. But like right, right when I got to the Google Keep clone, I, like the first few sections, I got it, and then all of a sudden he came out with some stuff that I had never fully understood or just I got lost like halfway. Pretty much is what happened. And then for the Hacker News clone, I don't know. Maybe it was I was just like tired or whatnot. But like I just couldn't I couldn't um, follow along. It was just so much stuff going on. And the thing is, it wasn't interactive based. It was basically him coding it up and you just watch him code it. And uh, that's pretty much what happened. So that's like a typical Udemy course or even like a YouTube tutorial where they just do all the typing and then you just hopefully you get it or you don't, which I felt like it could have been better in the sense that every like section he makes us rebuild it ourselves. But again, it's just, I, I felt like he was building it, he was handing it to us the whole time. So again, it's good if you, if you're much more, I'd say advanced in JavaScript, these might be really cool to add to like a portfolio or whatnot. But if you're like just getting started, this would make you so confused and you just get completely stressed out or frustrated to where you might not want to continue learning from JavaScript. But, um, so this is pretty much like the quick rundown on it, but overall, would I recommend the boot camp? So it depends on what level you are in your JavaScript journey. If you just start, if you're just starting out and you barely know, you know, simple functions and whatnot, yeah, probably would not recommend this boot camp. Because I was expecting this to be like a super beginner intro, hence the term boot boot camp. But this is way more intermediate than um, it states here. Again, unless someone has a different measure for intermediate, but um. Definitely, if you're just starting out beginner, spend like two months before even considering this because if you don't, you're going to get super lost and then half the stuff is just not going to click. Now, if you're more advanced, then it's probably if you can afford it, 39 bucks at the time of filming this, then I mean, go for it. There's more. There's some cool things that he says that um, I probably would have never heard. Like little tiny pieces of golden nuggets that maybe I'll see it in the future. But for this, I think they just clicked for me. So I guess that's already worth it for me in terms of the value. But the um, projects, if you're much more advanced, these would be a good thing to like go through. But for me, I just couldn't keep up with some of them. So it's like I didn't get the most value out of the projects. But again, that just depends. So again, would definitely recommend that he adds more interactivity to it. But overall, some of the information in there is pretty solid. And the other rest, 
it just depends on where you're at. But overall, this is my thoughts on the JavaScript bootcamp. Let me know if you've taken it or even considered it. And then also let me know other resources for learning JavaScript down below. And aside from that, I will see you in the next video. Peace.